Hello and welcome back guys to another Alpha Math video. In this lesson, we'll be looking at financial math from grade 11. Okay, so let's start off with the first question here. It says, calculate the effective interest rate per annum if an investment earns an interest rate of 11.5% per annum compounded monthly. Okay, so this interest rate that's given to you is a nominal interest, right? And uh, to convert a nominal interest into a, an effective interest, we have to make use of the following formula. So I'll just write it out over here. 1 plus I effective, that's your interest, uh, uh, effective interest rate, is equal to 1 plus I nominal divided by M, which is going to be that nominal value, uh, to the power of M. Okay, so when I talk about nominal interest, I'm referring to interest that is either quarterly monthly daily and so on right whereas effective interest is yearly right so it compounds every year per annum now um right let's first substitute our values and then we're going to work out i effective okay so this is the variable that we'll be trying to solve i effective and um yeah let's substitute so that your nominal interest would be 11.5%. That is represented as 0 0.115. Okay. And it's compounded monthly. So we'll both divide by 12 and raise that bracket to the power of 12. Okay. Now, before you go ahead and punch us in on your computer or um, calculator, let's first subtract one to both sides to get rid of the plus one on the right on the left hand side sorry okay now let's bring out our calculator here and we can simply punch in our numbers so there's your interest rate divided by 12 that's to represent the the fact that it's compounding every month subtract one convert all of this to a decimal and so we get zero point one two one two five okay now i want us to write out that first four decimals right let's round it to the nearest four decimals that should be one two one three okay and you'll see now why in a second why i'm converting it to four decimal places one two one three let's just confirm that yeah okay now when i multiply this by a hundred to convert it back into a percentage we see here that the percentage is rounded to two decimal places now if I chose to only use two decimal places then our effective interest rate would have come down to be 12% because you're going to multiply by 100 so that's why I say first round it to four decimal places here and then once you've multiplied by 100 you have your final answer rounded to two decimal places okay so this value over here this is your effective interest rate okay there you go now moving to our second question here we have Carabo who bought a computer for 4700 rand and uh, the value of this computer obviously depreciates right and it depreciates at the value or at the rate of 18 percent per annum so it loses 18% of its original worth each year or of its carrying value. That's what we call it, the carrying value or the book value each year. Um, using the depreciation method, calculate the book value of the computer four years after it was bought. Right, let's make use of our formula for depreciation. Um, this is the formula you'll use, which looks very similar to the compound interest formula except that there's a minus in the middle this formula is strictly related to the reducing balance method now substitute your values and we should get 4700 multiplied by 1 minus our interest or not interest rate but depreciation rate so that 0 0.18 uh, raised to the power of 4 your number of years Okay, again, we'll have to make use of our calculator. All right, so that's 4,700 times 
1 minus this time because it depreciates uh, 0 0.18 to the power of 4 okay and the carrying value of the computer after four years should be 2124.97 cents 2100 and was it 24 yeah 24.97 cents okay and uh, this is the the carrying value of that computer so right moving on to our last question over here um, this one is going to be a bit more complicated because now you have to construct a timeline in order to answer this one so let's read through it quickly okay um, I'm gonna to struggle to pronounce his name so I'm rather gonna say mr. N okay mr. N made an initial deposit of 20,000 into an investment account that paid interest at a rate of 7.2 percent per annum compounded quarterly right after two years the interest rate changed to 7.8 percent per annum uh, compounded monthly this time four years after his initial deposit uh, mr. n also withdrew 2500 from his investment so there's a couple of things that happens there's an initial deposit then there's a change in interest rate and um, two years later and then four years later he makes a withdrawal okay there are two questions here the first question is to say uh, calculate how much uh, Mr. N had two years after his initial deposit was made, right? So just two years after the initial deposit, that's with three marks. And then question 7.3.2 is, uh, how will this investment, or how much will this investment be worth after seven years uh, from the initial deposit? Okay, so not too hectic. Let's draw a timeline first so you can understand what's going on. Okay, this is usually um, not a must, but it sort of helps. Okay, so the initial deposit was 20,000 Rand. Okay, and for the first two years, it generated an interest rate of, um, what is that? Let's see. 0 0.072 that is 7.2 percent per annum compounded quarterly so i'm going to divide that by four that was the interest rate okay and then for the remainder of the period he earned oh, the investment earned an interest rate of 0 0.078 compounded monthly so this is a better interest rate right because it's more and it's compounding more as well right his previous interest only compounded four times a year whereas this one compounds 12 times a year so much better oh and also the withdrawal let me do that in a different color i'll do it in red the withdrawal happened four years into the investment right so it's like for the last three years um that there's a withdrawal being made of 2500 let me indicate that with a minus 2500 and that's for the remaining three years okay I think this is all yeah now let's calculate the first part of the question right we need to first need to find out how much he um, generated for this initial two years right hmm to work that out we'll use the compound interest formula 1 plus i to the power of n okay his investment 20,000 the interest rate we wrote it down over here 0 0.072 divided by 4 to the power of now remember the number of years is two years right for that initial period and because it's compounding four times like four times per year that means it compounds a total of eight times so i'll write here two times four which is eight okay let's punch this into our calculator and 
work out the value for that. 20,000 uh, interest rate 0 0.0272 sorry to the power of 8. Right, 23,000 68 rand 12 cents. Right, 23,000 68 and 12 cents. Let me just have a look at that one more time. Yes, okay. So there you go. Uh, this is your answer. Well, at least for the first question. Um, yeah. Now, for the second part of this question, which says, how much money will the investment be worth after seven years from the initial deposit? Um, well, let me erase all of this. I'm going to do it from scratch. Because um, I could work from where we were at, like, I could start my calculation from this point but maybe another question you might be faced with they don't give you that in between question so then you'll have to know how to do it like from scratch as well so I'll show you okay you can work it out this way um, the investment is going to be let's start with the 20,000 so we take the 20,000 and the 20,000 is in the bank for a total of seven years right it's it's there from the initial deposit so it's in the bank for a total of seven years so let's first do the first interest which was there for two years remember that's two times four that's how we get the eight in fact I'm gonna write it as such I'll say two times four okay we have to multiply this with the second interest rate which was 0 0.078 divided by 4 okay and no no sorry divided by 12 pardon me because it compounded monthly and this is in the bank for another five years okay this is in the bank for another you can see there from the second to the seventh year is five years times 12 because that's compounded monthly so that number is just 60 but I've written it as 5 times 12 to show you what's happening okay we are now going to subtract the deposit so uh, sorry not the deposit the withdrawal that was made now this withdrawal we can't just subtract the 2500 right because that 2500 would have generated interest had it been left there so we need to subtract the 2500 and the potential interest that would have come with that okay so we subtract 2500 and um, let's do 0 0.078 because that was the interest rate for this three-year period okay divided by 12 to the power of 3 times 12 so let me put the 3 there 3 times 12 okay so that's just 36 I will simplify it when I type this out into the calculator. Yeah, and uh, this is going to give us our final answer. So let's let's work it out. Twenty thousand one plus uh, yeah our first interest rate to the power of eight. I'm just going to say two times four is eight. Okay. This is going to be multiplied by our second interest rate, which was 1 plus 0 0.078 divided by 12 to the power of, uh, what was that, 5 times 12, so that's 60. Okay, and then we're going to subtract um, 2,500, that was the withdrawal. And all the interest this withdrawal, um, had it not been made, would have generated. Okay, so it's a lot of money that we are subtracting here. Um, to the power of 3 times 12, so that's 36. Okay, there's our final answer. It's 30,000 Rand, 800, oh, 30,871 rand 
with a 48 cents rounded rounded to 48 cents okay so let's write that down this is 30,000 rand 871 comma 48 cents let's just confirm that yeah that is the correct answer okay there we go and so that's how it's calculated cool so that's just a refresher on grade 11 financial math if you struggled with the timeline question then definitely go ahead and practice some more questions like this also i just wanted to mention by question two right where we use this depreciation formula this question was fairly simple in the sense that um, all the values on the right hand side of the formula was given to us right but what if they gave you a's value instead and maybe omitted either the p the i or the n you will have to be able to know how to calculate either p which is the initial um, value of the item or i the depreciation rate or n the number of years that this thing has depreciated so practice also scenarios where you calculating other variables not just the a variable okay and uh, yeah that's well conclude thank you so much for watching this video and uh, good luck